sorry, not pivot tables, VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is a function in Excel that is uh, very well received for people that know how to use it and <clears throat> typically very ill received for the folks that I don't understand it. And it's extremely powerful and it's technically outdated. Um, Excel has come up with new formulas that are actually more powerful than VLOOKUP and other functionality that's more powerful than VLOOKUP, especially on Excel 2016. However, VLOOKUP it still reigns king and supreme um, for quick searches. And once people learn how to use it, they really don't want to learn how to use something new. So let's talk about the structure of the VLOOKUP. So the formula is obviously VLOOKUP, and then you have basically four components. The first component is the value. So what am I searching in the VLOOKUP? What do I want to match from one table to the other table and return that the information? Table array, it's where, what's the source data, okay? So what's the source data in which I wanna search that value? That's the second, um, the second uh, syntax uh, that, that you see there. The third one is column index, which basically means that I'm gonna search the data within a table and the, the index data that I'm searching is always gonna be the first column and where, what column am I gonna return information from? And then range lookup, it's true and false, and we can discuss that in an example that is actually impossible to explain verbally what the range lookup true false option is. So that's, um, in a nutshell, uh, that explanation of that. So let me go ahead and uh, open up Excel. And while Excel loads, I just wanna show you something. If you go into Google and you search V lookup PDF, just search for V lookup PDF, just as simple as that, and click on the one from Microsoft, okay? There's a, a V lookup refresher. And that's gonna be that same PDF document that I, that I screenshot there, but that's gonna be three pages worth it. This is a full page. So you print this out and have it as a cheat sheet. And it's basically the best, best way to have summarized information about VLOOKUP. So that's actually probably one of the best resources I can give you uh, about VLOOKUPs. Uh, a lot of people don't, don't even know that that exists uh, over there. So, um, so again, just Google, uh, be look up PDF and just click on the one that says uh, Microsoft. I don't know what the other ones do, but just click on the one that says Microsoft and that would be good enough. All right, so let me go ahead and open an Excel file and I'm gonna open most of my examples. It's with bank data. I love bank data because it's pretty much as, as real as it gets. It's it's data that we that we picked from the bank. So we really don't get a say to you know how, how clean it is or how complete it is. So we so we have a lot of opportunity to, to clean it up. And what you're seeing here more or less is let me just hit select all here. This is the raw data I downloaded from my bank literally just now. So you're gonna see all sorts of bank transactions, money coming in, money coming out, and we're gonna use uh, some practical examples of, of how VLOOKUPs work on this specific scenarios on, on bank data scenarios now vlookups can work in all sorts of scenarios but i'm going to use this specific example as one so again the context is i'm looking at a, a downloaded transactions from the bank and um, there's all sorts of information and in our, in our previous webinar last month which uh, the recording you should you should be able to find it in youtube the february recording, we talk about how to clean up this data. That was like basically the entire episode was based on cleaning up this data. So I don't wanna to focus too much on cleaning up this data. I wanna focus on something called VLOOKUPs. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and select my entire data set here. I'm gonna to go to the data uh, tab and then click on filter. Now that's probably one of the most important basic things that you should know is you wanna filter your data and be able to uh, use specific data and, and columns to narrow down on, on the specific areas that I wanna work with. So for example, I wanna work just with checks. So I can take my filter on the type column and just un unselect everything and just select check, and that is going to show me only checks, okay? Uh, now, if I didn't have a check column, because obviously every bank would have information different, so I can't make the assumption of how the data will look from your bank, we may have a column that has a check number, and in that case, we can run the filter as well and uncheck uh, blanks. And as long as I have uh, everything else that has a check number checked, that should do the same function and narrow down all my checks. Okay, perfect. So that's 
kind of first step. Now, the other second assumption we want to make is that um, the banks never tell you what the payee is, never tell you who paid you um, on the checks. Normally, this is how it comes. You get a check number, you get an amount, you get a date, but you don't get to know the person's name. Somebody, either you or a client, if you happen to be an accounting professional, has to then look at the physical checks and transcribe them in there. But in many cases, we don't want to give <clears throat> the user doing this the entire spreadsheet because they may get confused. They may overwrite other data. We may want to give them just a separate spreadsheet altogether that only contains uh, the number, the date, the payee, and the amount, and have that person literally sit there and type all the payee uh, information in there without messing up my original. Let me just make this bold, make it easier to, to read. So without messing up my original spreadsheet. So if somebody was to do that and enter data in another spreadsheet, in another sheet altogether, then how do I take this information and bring it over here? Now, yes, I guess you could copy and paste. The problem is to copy and paste, you're making the assumption that the columns are going to line up 100%. So the best thing to do is it's called a VLOOKUP. Basically, what is it that I want to do? I want to tell, I want to figure out how to tell Excel, Excel. Find out if this check number, and I'm going to highlight it in, in blue here, find out if this check number, it's also somewhere in this spreadsheet. There it is. Okay. And then if when you find out that it is on that row, I want you to return to give me the information from the one, two, three, the third column. So in a nutshell, I want to figure out how to tell Excel, Excel, if you find this number in this in this table, give me one, two, three, the third result from the table. That's what a VLOOKUP table is. So <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is I want to select the data from the table I want to search in. And typically I can just hand select it like that, or I can just click anywhere there and hit control A on the keyboard. And normally that will select all the information in there. So the first thing I want to do is uh, select it. And I also want to make it a table. Best thing to do is select the data and then hit control T on the keyboard. And that's going to take a prompt the create table uh, button. And then basically says my table has headers. That's normally going to be the case. And then I hit okay. And what that does is it creates the table. It creates the, the, the data set as a table. So when I select the entire data set here, um, the, 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 this, this now should have a table name and having a table name is going to prevent this from uh, moving up and down on the reference formula. So this table right here, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it, oh, here it is, oh, here it is, table one. So this table has a name, it's called table one. It's already there. So I'm gonna make reference to table one instead of making reference to the range. So let's go back here. And then here we're gonna call this uh, pay. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do the formula now, right? So what I'll do is let me just make the font bigger to make sure it's something that you can read uh, really, really uh, clear here through the webinar. And then I'm gonna start typing the formula. The formula is equals VLOOKUP, okay? Open the parentheses, and we got this first um, value in the syntax is lookup value. So basically I'm gonna say, what value am I looking up? So I'm gonna look up this one, the check number. Okay, so that would be E14 in this case. The second one says table array. So from where am I searching this information? So I'm gonna go into another tab, you know, or maybe another spreadsheet. Typically, if it's another spreadsheet, just copy and paste it in a new tab. And then I'm gonna select my table ar uh, array here, okay? And then when I go back here, you're gonna notice that this will, whoops, too many clicks, let me try that again. VLOOKUP equals uh, parentheses, this value, on which table array, I will select the table array here. Okay. Select it again. Okay. And then switch. And the problem with doing that is it gets a little cumbersome with the clicking. So that's one of the huge advantages to having the table named that I actually don't have to select the table array. I can just literally type table one. And this is the biggest shortcut in the world. It's naming your table 
So I don't have to go back and forth the tabs and potentially get confused with what data array I'm selecting. So by giving it table one, it knows that no matter what, it's only gonna look up within this table. And then the next one says column index. So this, what this is asking me is, what column is it? One, two, three, column C. So I'm gonna return column C, which is the third column. And I'm gonna put in the next one, the number three. Then I'm gonna put comma, and it's extremely important. Um, and, and this is gonna make more sense when we do the next example on the, on the, on the true approximate. This is not an approximate search. This is an exact match. So I have to type false. False means it's not an approximate search, it's an exact match, which basically means if there's no match, you're gonna return bad information. You're gonna return an error. So I'm gonna press enter, and you're gonna notice say John Smith came in. Um, and basically I can gra uh, grab that, bring it down, all the way down, and notice that all of my vendor names are gonna come in. Now I do have this funky uh, font size. I'll bring that up to bring that down to regular uh, font size. But by dragging it down, we're gonna see uh, that PE work uh, just fine. So let me just uh, fix my font size again. Um, so and I'll make the entire thing maybe 16 point. Um, so this is how VLOOKUPs work, and this is the true value of, of VLOOKUPs. Now th there's another challenge to this is now I want to get this data. Uh, in here. Now, so I always do a VLOOKUP in a completely separate column, and then I come back and, and copy and paste. So what I normally do is I select the, the data set, and this is filter data. So remember, I have a filter here, so it's filter data, and I'm gonna right-click copy. And the way you know it's filter data is because you see those marching ants lines uh, in between some of the cells in there. And then I'm gonna come in here and make sure it's aligned 100%. I'm gonna right-click and then do Pay Special, and then I'm gonna do pay special values and I'm gonna skip the blanks just to make sure that I don't uh, paste over any blanks over. So I'm gonna hit okay. And that's basically gonna bring uh, that information in there. Uh, sometimes it's worth it to uh, undo the filters because you, you may have a little bit of a, a weird um, type of uh, behavior. So let me bring this back into 16 font and just kind of show you. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll sort these by check number that way uh, they're all together here. And I think I may have uh, broken a formula here somewhere. Let me, let me start this over and I know exactly what I did. <clears throat> what I did was I didn't have a filter on this uh, line as well. So let's, let's go ahead and, 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 and copy. I'm gonna copy this uh, VLOOKUP. Uh, I'm gonna cut this formula real quick. I'm gonna delete this all together and do it again. But this time around, I'm gonna uh, remove the filters and this could be very confusing with filters and again, I made that error on the spot. And then I'm gonna resort these by check number. That way I have them all next to each other and I can avoid that potential issue that I had. And then run that formula again, okay? This time around, I have to make sure that I make the right reference and then I can just copy and drag that down. Perfect, okay? And just, just to make sure that if I'm gonna copy and paste over, I'm gonna select now my, my new data set and do data filter because I'm working with filter data and that could mess up my, my copy and paste. So again, let's go ahead and select the data here, hit copy, come to the right side, pay special, values, skip blanks and hit okay. And that's gonna now replace the payee for my check numbers but not replace all my other information, perfect. So that's in a nutshell how VLOOKUP works. Now that's called the VLOOKUP false. Okay, so let me resort this by date. So now we have the information resorted back in there. Let me uh, do the font so it's all uniform at font 16. And let's now talk about uh, what they called the not, the, not the false approximate, but the true approximate. Let me uh, clean this up a little bit more. Uh, that way this is more readable. Okay, so I'm gonna make this all the same. Uh, distance here. So I'm going to have uh, one more column here and I'm going to call it value. Okay. And then you're going to see kind of what, where we're going to go from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have uh, the VLOOKUP search a particular range on the number. And based on that range is going to tell me it's low, it's high, something like that. Okay. But the first thing I want to do is I have to keep in mind that Checks are negative. So checks are negative. Um, 
deposits, sorry, uh, checks and payments are negative, deposits are positive, and I want to uh, search this by absolute value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert one more column here, and I'm gonna call it absolute value, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit equals, and then I'm gonna run a formula called ABS, which means absolute value of the amount. And what that's going to do in a, in a nutshell is, if it's positive, leave it in positive. If it's negative, convert it to positive. That way I'm looking at absolute values and I'm ignoring whether it's a positive or negative number. And that's a, really important for this next thing here, where I'm gonna give this a value like low, high, or medium, let's, let's call it that. So in another column altogether, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put together a chart. I'm gonna say from zero to 100, we're gonna call this a low value. From 100 to 1,000, we're gonna call this medium value, and this is gonna have a lot of value when, once we do um, our, our pivot table. And then from 1,000 plus, we're gonna call it high. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this tiny little chart I have here to tell this spreadsheet, hey, look up this value in, the, in this, uh, not this one, on this table. And if it's between zero to 100, put low. If it's 100 to 1,000, put medium. If it's 1,000 plus, put high. So first thing I did, like I said, we always are gonna select the table and hit Control T, always create the table. Make sure you have a, a table put together. Always have a table put together. Uh, that way we have a name table, it's called table two, which is gonna make it much easier for us to do our VLOOKUP. So there we go, equals VLOOKUP. And make the font bigger again because we're in a webinar and I know it's better to have bigger font. So we're going to do VLOOKUP and we're going to search for the absolute value, positive or negative, and we're going to look within the table arrange called table two. Remember, it's called table two. And the column we're going to look up in this case will be the second column, which is that high, low, medium number. And then at the end, I'm going to put a true for a plus or value. And by the way, uh, anything in Excel that is asking you for a true false, if you leave it blank, that's by default a true, right? So I don't have to type true. I can just leave it blank and it will have the same effect. But just to make it easier, I'm going to put true and then I'm going to press enter and then click and drag this all the way down. And now my numbers are going to be represented in terms of high, low, medium and um, high, low and medium.